Welcome everybody. This is my first live YouTube video. I uh, don't really know what I'm doing. I just wanted to get on here and talk about something that I'm working on right now. I have a couple of projects going on. But this one is so exciting. Um, I watch a lot of, of educational and inspirational videos uh, when it comes to fabric art to try to get um, inspired and, and kind of find my way through uh, my sewing journey. So there is a gentleman online, his name is Rob, and he is uh, the host of Man Sewing, which I think is a really cool concept. And he is uh, phenomenal. I think he used to be a construction worker or something. Anyway, um, his techniques and his ability to teach are amazing. So I was watching, um, I was at work and I was watching a video. Um, I was kind of on break, but anyway. Um, I was watching uh, one of his, what I, I'm assuming is one of his newer uh, videos because I hadn't seen it before. Um, and it was a basket weave quilt, which if you go on to uh, their page over at Manson and you can see uh, what I'm talking about. So it inspired me and I've never made a quilt like this before. Um, so I'm super excited. His was very vibrant and bright and shiny and all of that stuff. And um, uh, mine is a little more in the gray and darker tones, which um, I'm excited about. It's going to look, it's going to look good, I think. Um, so I paid close attention to his video. Anyway, um, I wanted to get on here and I was like, why not go live? Why not? I've never done it before um, like this, so let's do it. So I wanted to go over some things. Um, first of all, I'm using a cotton fabric that I am cutting into um, one and a half inch strips. It's just a cotton fabric. It'll be throughout the entire quilt. Um, and I am using uh, of course a rotary tool. I don't necessarily use scissors anymore for cutting um, fabric like this like I did when I first uh, started out. So best invention ever. Um, I actually just changed my blade because I got a nick in, in it and it was skipping. Um, so brand new blade. I uh, cannot do this without this guy. This is amazing. An amazing tool. And what I learned from Rob is what he did was, I don't know if you can see, um, I don't know if you can tell, but I used a dry erase marker and I marked my one and a half inch line right here so I could lay it on my fabric and it's easier for me to see where my fabric lines up um, because there's so many little dots and lines on here, my eyeballs get um, confused. So that has tremendously helped me. Thanks, Rob. Um, and then for when I'm cutting my blocks, which I'm about to show you, I went ahead and primarily with the way that, um, with the way this works out, I think your blocks are like seven and three quarter inch, um, because I'm using, or if you're going to be doing this, you will be using, um, the one and a half inch strip here that I had to cut for myself because I couldn't find the fabric that I really wanted to use. Um, so I just went and bought the bulk. Um, so I'm using uh, the um, jelly roll, I think is what these are referred to as. Um, and these are two and a half inch by 42 inch uh, pre-cut pieces of fabric. But these prints that are on the jelly roll that I'm using are so pretty. So I went to the store, my local fabric store, and I was going to get another jelly roll because I think you need 20 squares. Um, and I was going back to get another jelly roll of this set. Excuse me, I can't remember the name of it, uh, but I thought it was really pretty. So I get there and I start looking around and I needed to get uh, another uh, rotary blade. Um, and I got to looking and I was like, you know what? I came across these. This is a jelly roll that is all in solids. Um, I thought it was going to be kind of ombre style and that, that's actually what Rob uses uh, in the video that um, inspired me to make this uh, ombre bright peaches and yellows and oranges and stuff like that. Uh, ombre. Um, now I actually thought that this was and I was like holy Moses that's cool. 
Um, but come to find out, it's marbled. I, th I believe that's what it's called, but it's 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 primarily just solid colors of the gray hue, which goes perfectly with what I'm doing here, um, light to dark. I don't know how I'm going to make this work, but I'm going to do it. I went to get another one of these so it would be consistent throughout the piece. But I ended up getting this because I, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to try to make this happen. <laughs> we shall see. Um, I don't know how it's going to look. I feel pretty confident that maybe because and that's, I think I guess that's an oxymoron um, because they're in the same tones, the same soft grays and, and dark grays and light grays and whatever that I can make it look good. So we shall see, we shall see. So ironing is very important, very, very important. Um, jumping back to this, it's a very cool technique. I'm so glad that I was paying attention and was able to um, keep that in mind to do because it truly has helped me keep my line straight. But um, one very important thing to do with this, uh, with this type of, of project is to make sure that you have a hot iron. Um, there is one technique that I never knew before. I learned it when I was watching the video. And it, um, when you're joining, ta-da! I wish I had a full one put together, but I, I, I really kind of did this on the fly. Um, so this is ultimately what one square turns out to look like. Um, because of the length of the fabric, I guess I can put this here. Well, you, with it being seven and a half, seven and three quarter inch long, you, you measure the length um, or the width of your fabric and then you automatically turn your um, measuring utensil around and you cut exactly the the length or the width of the fabric um, to get your squares. Um, I am getting five squares out of this. One, two, three, four, five. Here is one. That's the first one that I actually cut. This was the second. I actually did this last night. Isn't that beautiful? I think that is so beautiful. Very nice, very nice. So you get five squares if you are doing the two and a half inch pre-cut and the um, one and a half uh, binding pieces that are in the middle. Here's another one. That is so beautiful. I can't wait to put this together. So I believe that the quilt is, I believe it's going to be eight, eight rows across and nine rows down and I wrote this down I thought I did anyway um, hmm I think it's like 50 54 by 82 inches um, if you do 20 uh, I guess 20 sets of, um, of blocks I think it's a hundred blocks I'm horrible with math but jumping back to what I was going to say a second ago is um, ironing. The ironing is such uh, is such an important thing. And the way he showed me on the instructional video, and I really hope, well, that's, I want one that's perfect so you can see. This one's pretty good. But when you are putting these pieces together, you iron them in such a manner that the um, quarter inch seam allowance is always in the printed material or the um, the center of your blocks. It's so crisp and so clean and there's a technique that you can use with the way that you're um, ironing this together. Maybe I'll make another video about that one day. Um, so yeah, you should try to investigate that if you're having issues with your fabric laying right or if you're getting bumps or, or puckers or whatever it is just from the, um, the excess fabric underneath. So it's super cool. All right, so um, I also learned that if you have a, a, a man, uh, um, automated mach uh, sewing machine, that uh, it defaults to a 2.5 or a 2.5 stitch 
Um, with the thinness of the fabric, um, it was recommended to drop it down to a 2.0 stitch. So what I want to do is I actually have these over here. I will be right back. Um, let me iron that out. I wonder if you can see me in the window. You can. Or in the mirror. So I have two more. I have the next set of pre-cut material that I'm using right here. So what I want to do is... The first thing you'll do is you'll get your one and a half and your two and a half and piece them together. Um, you want to sew all of these in the same direction, each strip in the same direction. So for the first, usually you like to put your heaviest weighted um, uh, fabric on the bottom. But for this, because of the way you're going to sew this together, you actually will put um, your larger piece of fabric on top. Um, I've made sure that my stitch length is at a two, and I will stitch the top to the top, the larger top piece of fabric to the bottom, and then what I will do is I will once I'm finished with that, I will take this, and when I iron it, because it'll be like this. Actually, it's going to go like this. So it'll be the right side of the fabric right here. Just like that. Okay. And so ultimately I will take the iron and I will crease or I will push this seam over and it'll push that seam allowance underneath the um, the printed material uh, fabric in the center, which is really cool. I was doing it completely different because I'm still learning, but I thought that was really cool. So once I piece this together, and this is laid out like this, I will get the next piece, the next one and a half inch strip, and I will iron it to the top or the right side of the fabric with the weight on the bottom. So the more fabric you start using, the, the, uh, or the more fabric you, you sew together, then it's, uh, weight, its weight should be um, getting fed into, the, um, into the, the, dog, the dog teeth or dog ears. I can never remember what that is, um, what those things are. So that's what I'm about to do. I wanted to share this with you because um, this is a very fun project and I'm really, really happy with the way that it is turning out right now. So I will get back on uh, later on and show you guys um, my progress. So have a wonderful Saturday and I look forward to your comments and your, um, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Cheers.